This is a question from Paul Bai. He says, why did you change your mind on Amazon? Well, I'm tempted to re repeat the I'm stupid explanation just for the sake of brevity <laughs> and completeness. Um, I think, like an awful lot of decisions, um, it's a bit complex insofar as they changed a bit and I changed a bit. I think, uh, you know, we changed a bit. Uh, so our view changed somewhat. And, and, their, and, and their business changed somewhat. Let's just deal with what changed in their business. I think that's the most uh, important thing is, firstly, we've always said that we didn't like the returns. Well, the returns have started to come through an awful lot better. I've got the returns table in front of me because I, I knew you were gonna ask the question, obviously. And if you look at their return on capital, you, know, you only need to go back to 2014 and it was negative. You know, it's now in the teens, basically. It's clearly on an upward trend. And the return on equity has actually got into the, in the mid to high 20s now. So clearly the sort of, you know, our first sort of cross in the box of does it pass has begun to be removed. Um, then you look at the individual businesses, and I'm going to go through this in a bit of detail, uh, Ian. Um, <clears throat> the Amazon Web Services business, the cloud business, you know, we've always said we liked, and presumably we don't have to debate. It's, a, you know, it, it's basically one of the, uh, the titans uh, alongside Microsoft in the, in the cloud computing infrastructure sector. Uh, so we've got a business here with you know, somewhere north of $50 billion of sales, uh, and it's growing probably around 20% per annum, and, uh, and with 5% of the world currently, in terms of its computing currently in the cloud, probably has decades rather than years ahead of it of growth. So we needn't worry about that bit, would be my suggestion. Um, then let's look at the rest, because that's where we'd always worried, the e-commerce bit, and it was loss-making and so on. A few things have begun to change there, um, or our opinion of them has begun to change. The th and I'll just touch upon three. One is the breakdown between first party and third party revenues. When you buy something, or we buy something on Amazon, it can be Amazon selling it to us, or it can be a third party. And the, the financial characteristics of those two things are quite different. When Amazon sells me something for $10, um, then it shows up in their revenue line as $10, and they make whatever margin they make on the $10 item. When they sell it on behalf of a third party, all that shows up in the revenue line is the commission they charge. And the other thing is they don't carry any working capital. It's sitting in their warehouse. It's got to be for them to send it to me. But frankly, um, the commission is much more pure profit and there's no working capital or cash flow strain. So the financial characteristics of that commission on the third party item are far better than the first party item because it's nearer to pure profit and it doesn't have very much capital strain involved. Yeah, it's got some fixed capital in the warehouse. There's no working capital. They don't own the item after all. And that balance between first party and third party has been changing very markedly. Uh, in the final quarter's figures for last year that we had for them, the third party was about 50, had risen to about 56% of its sales. And I think that's something that I stroke we, and I mean the, the wider we in terms of the world, hadn't, hasn't fully grasped the different characteristics of that. Secondly, there's Prime, their subscription, Prime subscription. Uh, which you sign up for and you get free next day delivery and you probably use it for uh, media, maybe music, uh, video and so on. This is a powerful engine. I mean, we're now north of 200 million members uh, in this. Just to give you a few yardsticks, Apple has got 98 million members. Right? And this, of course, is something with Apple Music that they've been running since the day of the iPod MP3 player. Disney Plus uh, has got 104 million members. Costco has got 61 million members. Right? This is quite powerful stuff. And it's a double positive insofar as, on the one hand, it makes us do more stuff. If you're a Prime member, you buy more stuff, uh, you shop more frequently, uh, and so on and so forth. Just as Costco's members uh, obviously uh, have bigger baskets and so on than people who are non-members who shop at Walmart and so on and so forth. Um, and it's also quite a good profit source. I mean, they've just put the price up on the US uh, membership um, from $119 to $139 per annum. That $20 extra on, uh, I think it's nearly 100 million users in the US, is pure profit, you know? So that, that's $2 billion uh, of, of additional income for which the marginal cost, I think, is a programmer going 119, delete the first two numbers, put 139 in, send. That's it. It's quite a powerful lock-in and a powerful uh, profit. And finally, advertising. You'll probably have <coughs> heard an awful lot about the development of the Apple operating system, iOS 14 and 14.5, and the fact that it makes it more difficult for people to trace the impact of advertising because we have to opt into the use of our data for that. That's true, and it's a headwind for, uh, for, for uh, Facebook in particular, or for the meta uh, platforms to use.